Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here with the two Jeremys. We have a special Jeremy edition. Jeremy <laughs> Shepard from the Guitar Hunter is gonna be here. Twice as nice. He has twice as much Jeremy. Anyway, we're gonna be doing a blind test on the much talked about Bourgeois Touchstones. So we're back once more, and this is I'm the excited. talk of the internet. Uh, what, the Jeremy Shepard was on the show? Yeah, Jeremy Shepard being on the show. That's exactly the talk he of the internet. He's been in the shop next door hunting all of our guitars. We have bullet holes in the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. I don't know why you feel like you got to shoot all the guitars. 600 yards is my best shot. <laughs> I just bagged a beauty. <laughs> These have actually been the most talked about things. Uh, there was a collaboration between Eastman Guitars, in case you are, how much do you know about this uh, Touchstone series? I don't know much. Uh, so I adore acoustic guitars. I pay attention to a lot of hand-built and boutique guitars. I've heard about these, but I haven't paid too much attention. Uh, also, since I've heard that I knew that I was going to do this. Okay. I've tried to back off any info intake. Okay. Any impartial. So I'm going to give you the, uh, in a nutshell, what is happening here. The Bourgeois, uh, Bourgeois team and Eastman are now one big happy family. That is uh, where it is. And Lewiston, we were just came back from there. We actually got to talk with Dana and the entire team. They are actually going to be expanding what they do in Lewiston. It will be even better than they've always been before. They literally kept the exact same team together, just added more people, more equipment, more ability new to facility. build. Yep, a whole new facil facility is coming. I can't speak today. Um, but they're gonna be expanding what Bourgeois has always been. But one of the big dreams for Dana has been, he knows that his guitars start at six, seven, eight thousand dollars and go from there. Mm -hmm. And then as you and I both know, I mean, this is the focus of your channel. Not everybody can afford to do that. So his dream was to build a guitar that had all of the innovations, the features, the sound, everything at a much more affordable price. Thus came the Touchstone series, which is a collaboration where Dana and his team actually voice the tops of these guitars, the same piles of wood, they pull the same exact ones, voice them, build them in exactly the same way, they vacuum seal the tops, ship them to Bajau, China, where the Eastman facility and a specially trained team are able to build the rest of the guitar with all the same features, the same neck joint that all bourgeois come with, the same voicing, the same style of voicing, same, um, finish. same finish, same glue joints, and everything about it is exactly profile, the same. All that. Yeah, so yeah, profile, they, they sent over Dana's, some of Dana's team to train these guys on how they build the bodies of the guitar, still leaving the specialized top voicing to Dana, the thing that he's kind of legendary mm -hmm. for. So that way you're still getting that what he spends most of his time doing anyway, and then they're able to outsource kind of the uh, the body part of it, which we talked about in another video that's uh, on the channel, where you know that he's known for that particular thing. He doesn't necessarily need his hands in the thing that other people can do well, which Absolutely. would be the building the body and the, the neck and all that. And the thing that I always think about when guitars, when that story comes up, great guitar company in America wants to build guitars overseas to be more affordable, to get more people into the audience. They always put heavy finishes that's the thing for me it's heavy finishes and then they clearly brand them mark them make them look unlike their american versions in this case you won't see that it'll have the same exact logo in the peg head the same finish style the same quality finish i mean it is literally built the and same exact way it has literally took Done. taken two years of back and forth a lot of these prototypes coming back because dana and they told us in the shop which i was very impressed with they want if two bourgeois guitars are standing next to, her, to each other, one's a touchstone, one's a, a bourgeois, which is what we're doing here today, they want people to not be able to tell which is which. So there's a few little differences. We won't get into them before we do this test, but we will get into the uh, little intricacies of what the differences are between these two guitars. But in theory, they should be very, very close. We're gonna find out today how close they actually are, and uh, and it's gonna be fun because we're gonna make you wear a mask and, <laughs> and really embarrass you in front of everybody. Wait so a mask. Nobody, nobody on your channel is gonna wanna watch you anymore, so good, good for us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just for clarifying. Mask over my mouth, over my face. Uh, all of the above. <laughs> Just, entire body suit. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this guitar has sat on my lap. I have not looked at it. I've not. I've you know involuntarily played it a little bit here and there. But uh, I'm excited for this. All right. 
So, Jeremy, I don't know about you, but I cannot see anything. I'm not aware of what John has in his hands. I hope it's a guitar. <laughs> That's debatable. It could this be. Is, it could not be. This is not my weirdest Thursday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Guitar one. So first and foremost, I'm going to say there is a difference between these two guitars. Can I, I look at them? I heard. You can or look at just, them. Uh, maybe you, I, could you hear a difference between the two guitars? Well, <laughs> not. It was not easy. Okay. Like so, there is. There's two caveats to this uh, deal. One, there are two different guitars. Okay. Yep. Second one is there is one major spec change. And it's only because that's the only thing we had available at the time. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> totally this one did. comes with an he extra pick. <laughs> big drop in the sound hole. We're keeping this, by the way. You did not get no, that edited hey, out. Yeah, that's an expensive <laughs> pick. I gotta get this out at some point. <laughs> Anyways, so one major change to this. One of these guitars has the exact same top. It is an Alaskan spruce top with Adirondack spruce bracing, but one of them has been thermo cured and the other one hasn't. And that is the only major besides some uh, cosmetic appointments. So there is a little caveat to this, okay. but this is all we had available to be able to do this blind Got test it. directly back and forth. Got it. And it's so impossible to do, to get two that line up yeah. so closely. Okay. Um, my observations of the first guitar was very clear. When I think bourgeois, I think very clear, very precise. I could hear every note. They were about the same volume. It was really a great sounding guitar. Then the second guitar, I could feel in my feet in the ground, um, which I didn't think I could do the first time, but it didn't have as much clarity in the low end, I didn't think, in the articulation. Okay. So that's my, those are my only two big observations. Yeah, to me the second one sounded made just a little more boxy, like a little bit more hollow sound to it, not quite as refined. I, I would, ear. I think I would agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. I think the first guitar had a little bit more warmth to it, mm -hmm. a little bit uh, of the clarity, um, like you said, that's kind of a more vintage -y sound, um, where the other one was a little bit more new, had more volume by uh, quite a bit, in my opinion. Um, sorry, which one had more volume? The, sorry, the second guitar had more volume than the first one. And the second one did sound me like, as a maybe like a brand new guitar that just hasn't opened up. Okay. So. Because I, I also found myself moving my head trying to get both ears to mm -hmm. really hear it. It's a tough deal because I'm on the back really side hard. of it. They're very, very close. And I will say this, there's also a little bit of a feel difference. And uh, so I will tell you exactly what you were listening to. The first guitar was the actual bourgeois guitar with a thermo cured top. So we're talking about that depth and warmth, the more vintage-y uh, you know, deal. That to and me is separation. character. 
it was because I could hear these runs and like I knew and I don't have a great ear, but I knew what key you're in, where your hand is. It was very like I could I could understand a lot of where you're coming from. So I find that a lot of that to be the thermo cure top difference, um, but there obviously is some difference there. Uh, the, the B guitar was the touchstone guitar. Um, definitely was impressive to me how much volume and power it had as a non thermo cure guitar. Mm. Um, what really surprised me personally, um, I know that the voices uh, of the Lewiston guitar, the back is voiced by Dana and his team, where the back on on the touchstone guitar is voiced by the team in China. Uh, so. I actually had more presence off the backside of that guitar with hmm. the touchstone than I had from the Lewis guitar, which was surprising. Could, you can kind of feel it in the floor a little bit more yeah. too. I, I think felt I, it more. What I, I, you know, if I was picking between the two, I did like the first one more just because it had more warmth to it. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe some of that's the the uh, thermal curing process, but it just maybe. I guess it, for people that are saying, you know, is there a big enough difference to justify the bourgeois uh, made in Lewiston? If listening to those two guitars, I would say probably. Um, but if you can't afford to jump into that one, the, the the touchstone was a very close contender. Like like you said, it just almost felt like a brand new guitar that needed played a lot more to really open up and get that warmth. So which am I holding? You are holding the touchstone guitar. What? Um, so the big difference in this guitar. Okay. So I, you want to know what I think is awesome. You guys, from the logo standpoint, looks exactly the same, except this one actually is using a uh, ABS logo in it, and that one actually has Pearl logo as a touchstone, which is a surprise to me. Uh, I found that to be very interesting to see. Okay, yeah. So it is using yeah, it a looks like plastic or yeah. ivoroid uh, style uh, logo, like, which also looks good uh, and yeah. not bad, but actual Pearl one in those. Yeah. Um, the big changes on these guitars, like I said, besides the voicing, this uh, will have the Waverly's. That's going to have shallers on it instead of Waverly's. So there is a cost, a little bit uh, difference there. The neck profile is going to be different, and you'll get to play it here and feel that here in just a second. Hang on. It's they very both, close. Don't they both have shallers? This should be Waverly's. Well, this one does have shallers. Oopsie. They both have shallers. <laughs> yeah, this one is a Generation D, so they did okay. make this a little bit more affordable. I forgot that they did switch out the But they're good looking. Members. I like the oh, solid yeah. uh, back oh, of the shower gear. Shower tuners have been some of the greatest tuners in the world yeah. until everybody decided that Waverly's had to be there. Uh, these were the strong stuffs. So good, that, good eye on you, by the way. Hey, that's, both bone hunter. nuts, both bone saddles. They both have the same slot width. Uh, that uh, Bourgeois does a little bit wider. These are unslotted bridge pins. Okay. Just like a Bourgeois will be, the same neck joint. Um, I mean, this to is... the naked, naked eye, you will not be able to tell a very big difference between these two guitars. I remember when I was a, a kid learning how to play, and I, I miss the era of when uh, certain guitar brands would put the big sticker in the back of the guitar that would tell you what it was. And then, you know, because I'd always be watching someone at church or whatever and then run up. What is that? And if I could get within five feet, I could see in. But with this, there, I mean, you would do some serious peeping yes. to have to figure out what this is. Literally, that was what Dana told us while he was there. He says, I want this to where if you are five feet away, there would be no way to tell the difference between these two guitars. And I think they've accomplished that. I'm incredibly impressed. Yeah. I mean, this is unlike any guitar I've ever seen uh, made in China. So the, for specs wise, and again, I told you that there's a caveat to this. This is a Generation D. So this is a Rosewood Generation D with a thermo cured Sitka spruce top, the Alaskan Sitka spruce top, Adirondack bracing, same uh, same top, but this one's been thermo cured. This has the simpler binding. This has the three ply binding or five ply, like a, mm -hmm. a D28, not an HD28. For spec comparison, I talked to the guys at Lewiston. The exact same guitar in a build from Lewiston would be called the Vintage Pro. The Vintage Pro would be the exact build of this guitar. Got it. Um, and you know what? I'm hoping by a future uh, one of these we do a blind test, we will be able to do an exact Vintage Pro against that and see how close they are. Yeah. Because these were close. There definitely was a little bit of a difference there, and but it wasn't as dramatic as I thought but it was I going think to be. I think it's with your eyes. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it was so much closer than I thought it could be. <laughs> They're definitely, uh, like I said, some warmth, some feel. Uh, play that one. See what you think. As far as play, I want you to play both of them. I'll take that one. 
So you, there is a slight difference to, good luck getting that pick out here. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, the neck profile is just a tiny bit different. Just a tiny bit. The bass really stands out more on that one. I'm trying to hear the difference in the two guitars. I I almost wonder if it's truly the the thermo curing versus that because they are very close. So here's the big deal, the biggest difference right here. This guitar somewhere around I believe sixty nine hundred dollars. Uh, that guitar is going to sell under three thousand dollars. I'll take one of those. So. <laughs> <laughs> take two of those. Yeah. So, I mean, even if you do feel, hear a difference and you feel like, oh my God, it was so dramatic, and I know there's going to be a bunch of you that will, mm -hmm. I know there's also going to be a ton of you that are going to go in there and say, I prefer the Touchstone. We've had these videos mm -hmm. over and over, and that's why there are a billion guitars out there, why everybody's making different ones, is because everybody's ear is different, and that is a fair, fair assessment. You are not wrong. Guess what? Everybody who thinks they have a favorite is not wrong. That's that's the facts. So and it is it is the best time to be a guitar player. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I agree. I feel so unworthy to be around as many amazing guitars are being made right now. I, w I was thinking about the price point. This is, I mean, a regular D twenty eight is thirty two ninety nine. So this is this is this Below is that. nicer than an HD twenty eight. So that's where. It that is incredible to me. I think that this guitar would go to a purist, someone that is uncompromising in their pursuit of the best guitar made by the most providential guitar builder, the way it's built, where it's built, what it means about them as a player and an owner. I think this one is going to be for someone who uh, wants to work with a guitar. Could, I mean, you could take and travel with this in a way that I think some people would not feel comfortable. Sure. Uh, with the Lewiston ones, but this is an unbelievable guitar. Um, yeah, so I think I think working, traveling musician, professional, someone in the studio, they could take this, and then this would be the one that they would keep at home. You know, they are very invested in making sure that it's not just one of those, we wanted to sell a cheap guitar, we wanted to sell a bourgeois quality guitar at a lower price. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the blind challenge of the Touchstone guitars. Uh, no matter how you look at it, again, both fantastic guitars. Like I told you in the beginning, they're both great guitars. It's going to come down to what you personally uh, value most. And again, you, tell us what you guys think. I want to know, do you guys feel that there is that big of a difference? And like I said, I'm almost guaranteeing we're going to get people that are going to say the Touchstone was their favorite. They're going to get mm -hmm. others that say that the uh, Generation D was their favorite. And again, I, I don't think either one of you are wrong. So there you go. Hey, we really appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite it's one we've made so far. We've, we've done hundreds of videos, and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's going to be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms. They're everywhere. They permeate the internet, and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos, and it sees how much you comment, and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the, the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we've got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it, and we'll see you in the next video.